Welcome to the next video in the GateStorm series, Quick Start Gate Generation. In this video, we're going to look at loading up a template and setting up a few complex lanes. Before we begin, if you need to reset your GateStorm back to its factory default, hold buttons 1 and 8 down while powering the GateStorm on. A screen will come up asking you if you want to reset to factory. Selecting OK will do so. Once the factory presets have been restored, it loads up Bank 1 Preset 1 by default. We want to start with an empty pattern. To do so, we will load up Template 1 that we have stored in memory. Press the encoder button in, which brings up the Preset and Settings menu, and cycle down to Read Template. Select Read and pick Template 1. You can change templates to be whatever you want, but by factory default, template 1 is set up to be a generic set of nothing really going on for the complex lanes and some different divisions and multiplications for the simple lanes. Template 1 was designed to be a good place to start for when you're trying to learn how GateStorm works. The first four lanes are the complex lanes which have no steps turned on, they all have length of 8, and you can see that their time base is 1. The next four are the simple lanes. They have a variety of different divider multiplies, and currently their density setting is at 95%. Now, we've only just loaded something into Bank 1 Preset 1. It is not stored in that location. Patches are not stored until you actually save them. So the first thing, let's attach lane 1, which goes to output A, and lane 2, which goes to output B, into a drum module. So let's go ahead and hook up output A, which is currently assigned to lane 1, to the kick drum trigger, and we'll set output B, which is currently assigned lane 2 to the pitch CV of the kick drum. We'll set the output of the kick drum into levitate being used as a group mix. And then the output of that into our mixer. So the first page here, labeled steps, can cycle through 1 through 8 and 9 through 16 of the steps. So we're going to go ahead and turn on a couple steps. Sequence settings. The second button, sequence or SEQ, brings up the sequence settings. If you press it again, it will bring up the sequence utility menu, but we want to work with the sequence settings menu. So we can change the length with the first selection. So we'll go down to 7, press any button to exit that. Button 2 is time-based, we'll speed it up, go back down to multiply by 2, the third button is rotate active. What this means is it just rotates within the range that is currently active, so the 7 steps that are active right now. And these are just for experimenting. Rotate all will rotate with all the steps, even the ones that are not active. So we know there's zeros or all off steps in those locations. Now, the fifth button is direction. Currently, as you can see right here, we're going forward. We can change it one and go backwards. We can change it again and do palindrome. And then we have one shot mode. 
So if we go ahead and take and hook up a trigger to our trigger one, and we use the mother 32 here to generate this. If I push any of the buttons to generate a gate, it will do a one shot. Now, the way the system is set up right now, we're in sync mode, so the one shot occurs on timings of the master clock. So we'll go back to forward. The sixth button is invert. What it does is invert all the steps. And of course, button seven is all off. You can do this if you quickly want to go in, shut them off, go back to the steps page. Now the last button is random. Now, right now when I hit random, nothing is happening. We're going to go through random settings in a lot more detail in one of the later videos, but I'm going to quickly show you how to go ahead and turn some of the random features on. So if you press the pulse width button twice, it brings up the random menu, and you can see who I have selected is channel one, and I'm going to go ahead and turn steps to all, we'll turn time base on, and length on. And these just turn on and off that way. So now, if I go back to the sequence page and hit random, now it's going to randomize those settings. Now you'll notice here that you're only hearing when the steps aren't tied together. That's because the pulse width is set to full. So if I hit the pulse width button and I bring up this pulse width menu, right now we're set to one, but if I come down to half, now they're not going to be tied together. And here I'll set to 1 32nd. And if I actually go down to zero, now the pulse widths are off. I can make them bigger until they get to max. Now they're tied together again. So let's randomize a couple more times. We'll go back to the sequence page. We'll use that one and we'll change the pulse width to one half. And then we'll just go in and modify our steps. go in and let's change the time base up a little bit. And we'll change, go in and change the length. Let's go to eight. Now we know the second lane we have set up to do pitch changes on the kick. Exit out of that by just hitting any button and then use the rotary coder to go down to the second channel and now we're going to go and turn on some pitch changes. And as you can see, what's happening is this timing is different, and we can actually go in and set it to a different length as well. So we'll go down to four. And everything, because everything is in sync mode, will be to this clock. So we could go in and change the time base on this second one to be much faster. And you see, you can get to some really interesting relationships. So that is our quick introduction to the complex lanes. In the next video, we're going to look at the simple lanes and how to save our preset.